YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl Jahira, and I am back after one hell of a hiatus. Um, I guess in theory it's only been a couple of months. And uh, I think the why I left will sort of manifest itself as this video progresses. Um, I think in the wake of obviously a, a, a great shift in our um, political structure, a great shift in our country has taken place. Um, I felt compelled to come on here tonight, more so for my benefit and, and as an act of courage than, um, than for any other reason. And, and I'm going to try to break that down for y'all, and, and hopefully in doing so I'll make some sense of it myself. It's, it's an interesting time to be someone like me. And me, me in general. It's an interesting time to be me. Um, from a personal stance, you know, my life is going pretty status quo. You know, I, I don't have a lot of woes to lay at y'all's feet. Um, but I look at the community in which I dwell and I have never experienced, well, not in a very long time have I experienced such an undercurrent of fear coming from the people whom I fellowship with, whom I stand in solidarity with, whom I love. Um, and there's an interesting juxtaposition or, or, or transfer in that sense because I, um, I personally feel that fear motivated the way that many Americans voted in this election, uh, one way or another. And... Um, and, in, and now it seems that one fear has resulted in another, in a, in a different kind of fear. I come from an era, this is going to require a cigarette, why didn't I just start, like... Um, we're living in a drastically different time than when... Um, I will say the the authenticity of my life began, which is essentially at 16 years old. Um, when I was coming up, the 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 goal, the standard by which you were deemed as having had a, a successful life and a successful transition was assimilation. Um, the 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 litmus test was essentially to um, be as evolved aesthetically as you possibly could and then for all intents and purposes sort of immerse yourself in cisgender heterosexual society essentially to disappear and that has that has followed me well into my 30s this this ideology that um, that in in order to perform successfully at life, I have to um, kind of keep my head down and uh, not create waves and and not be visible in terms of um, my life and the journey that. Um, that I went on to arrive at this point. And when things like this happen, um, and by things like this, I'm sort of referring to um, targeting of, of the trans community and the larger, you know, LGBTQ community, um, as well as because my life has been one that is layered and nuanced. I am a person of color. I am also an immigrant. Um, 
So uh, there are there are levels <laughs> to my anxiety. Um, when things like this happen, when when I feel that we are, for want of a better way to put it, under attack, flight is my first instinct, and that's not an easy thing to say. You know, I, I think that in theory we would like to be the people who, you know, stand up and rally. Um, but that's not where my mind immediately goes. And that can probably be traced back to the early years that I spent in activism and advocacy and the, the, the sobering realization that for every march that I attended or organized for, for every dent that we made in social consciousness you could turn right around and within, you know, oftentimes less than a month of that, you heard of another trans person being killed. And so it, it did instill this fear in me that said, you know, maybe, um, maybe disappearing is the right thing to do. Maybe, um, you know, dropping my, uh, sense of community and, um, and, and sense of familial structure and, and going somewhere where I was not um, particularly known was the best move for me. And it's really this mindset, I can say this now because hindsight is twenty twenty. It's it's that mindset that sort of led me to move to Louisville, Kentucky for those five years that I was there. Um, there were other mitigating factors, but if I break it down to the lowest common denominator, that would be it. Um, just a desire to start over and and to kind of uh, disappear into the ether, so to speak. And so I, I come on here tonight as a statement first and foremost to myself because people are frightened. People are frightened and, and I am one of those people. I, I, not to say that you can necessarily quantify panic, but I'm, I'm a bit higher functioning than, than others whom I have seen at this point. Um, but, but there is a real... We have now planted the seed through which a culture of fear can grow. Um... And I'm here because I'm standing up. I'm standing up for those who can't. I'm, I'm standing up for those who won't. And I am not going to go gently into that good night. Obviously, I have deep feelings around the outcome of this election. And... I am not one of those people who deleted a single friend or family member based on who they said that they were going to vote for. Voting for me is a very layered thing because this was actually the first presidential election in my life that I was able to cast my vote for. Um, I have a long and illustrious history with immigration issues and did not become naturalized until probably my early 30s. That sounds about right. Um, that's when I became a U.S. citizen, for those of you unfamiliar with naturalized. Um, so yeah, this was the first time I got a chance to vote. And, and there was this interesting, no, not interesting, really crazy juxtaposition between soaring like an eagle on the wings of finally being a part of the American process and, and not ever having felt as American as I did that day and then crashing down in the pits of despair based upon the outcome. I, I try to be very intentional in creating space for anybody to have their political beliefs. It is a fundamental American right. Um, 
it is hard when you see friends and family members who are actively voting against your best interests um and and i saw that with people that were unbelievably cl i mean as close as you can get to me and it stings it is a um i think it's at best a microaggression um i i i can rationalize that it it wasn't necessarily done maliciously but it was done and i will be affected by it nonetheless Frankly, I would have preferred a candidate who had absolutely no intentions to do anything regarding my community than somebody who ostensibly appears to have a desire, and if he doesn't, his vice president certainly does, to negate the progress that has been made and, and in other ways to reverse it. That is a very difficult pill to swallow. And by the same token, I recognize how easy it is to overlook something that does not directly affect you. Um, I, I get that. I don't like it, but I get that. And so... I and those like me sort of have to figure out what the next four years are going to look like, presumably. Um, and what I am committing to against the ever-present voice in my head that says, hide, um, is not going away easily and being a presence and continuing to be a voice on YouTube and wherever else I'm led to go that offers people an example of who a trans woman can be and what a trans woman can look like and the way that a trans woman can move about in this world. Um, I've always been very conscious that the, the bulk of my subtastics are cisgender people. And I have to believe that some of you um, may not have a trans friend in your personal lives. Um, and, and may not feel a sense of connection to the LGBT community. Um, and I'm here to, as gently as possible remind you that you do have a trans friend and um and if if there are questions around that i'm here i'm here and i can be contacted you know i i never intended and i, I was very conscious about not making this sort of a trans centered channel because there are plenty of those and frankly, in, in terms of self-autonomy or, or autonomy over one's narrative, um, my agency does not prioritize my, my reality as a woman who arrived at womanhood as a result of transition. It's just not as big a deal to me as it is to others. You know, I, I only have my own lens to look through here, my own perspective. And I don't want to sound cavalier about this, but I've always sort of had this kind of attitude that, you know, I was born with a problem. I fixed the problem. Ergo, there is no longer a problem. And that is a very simplistic way of putting this. And I know that. I, I promise I do. Um, but it's just... You know, these qualifiers that, that we use to identify us, and this is really common amongst women. I, I mean, you know, no shade to the men that are watching, and I know that you're out there, but but this is very, I, it's, a, it's a real, in my experience, woman thing that we kind of tend to identify ourselves by our relationships to others. 
you know, I am a daughter, I am a sister, I am a mother, I am a wife. Um, and, and people get very intrigued by those qualifiers. And in my experience, when, when you have something like trans under your belt, all of a sudden, you know, well, maybe not so much anymore, but certainly coming up, you were a novelty. And, and people were all too happy to, you know, commodify your existence and co-opt your story. And, and basically you served as inspiration porn for the masses. Oh, what she's been through and, and what she survived and she made it. And, and it's like, you know, the end of the Lifetime movie and the sun comes out and birds start chirping. You know, I... I I, I live a very mild-mannered existence, and, you know, I don't wake up every day, stumble out of bed, make my way to the bathroom, and brush my trans teeth like that's not happening here. Um, but I, I will not negate the importance of what it can mean for somebody who's had a fairly sheltered existence to finally bear witness to the life of somebody who's experience has been vastly different from their own and and hopefully get something out of that you know in much the same way that like you know my home girl bonnie joe the potato farmer in idaho like what do i know about any of that you know we can all um no disrespect to the bonnie joes of the world i love potatoes i'm just putting it out there clearly bitch sorry but yeah like um we're all in an opportunity we're, we're all in a space where we can learn from each other and, and i am not some like grandmother willow you know dispensing the wisdom of the ages um and being incapable of absorbing anything in return um I love to learn, and, and I try to find opportunities on a daily basis to become aware of something that I didn't know before. Um, so I am not doing myself any good, nor am I doing anybody else any good by playing my life small at this point. Um, and I guess my point of all of this is to say I'm here and... I'm going to be here. And so, I appreciate you listening. Please, wherever you go, take my love with you. And um, always and forever, one love. <laughs>